Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I'm really excited today because when I'm back home, I'm in Detroit. And I've been traveling a ton over the past few weeks and uh, my travel schedule is going to maintain like this until mid-May. I'll be gone a lot over the next few months or few weeks. But I'm really excited because um, the last two weeks have been just really like enriching and really fulfill fulfilling. Um, I spent a week in, uh, I mean, a weekend in Texas um, hosting a group of clients, which was absolutely amazing. Um, I haven't been able to, you know, me and my business bestie, Jordan Gill, are doing a program called Board of Brilliance this year, where we're meeting with, you know, individuals and meet, meeting with clients every single quarter to do like business and strategic planning for them. Um, and that was really, really enriching. And then the week after I was in um, Southern California in a coaching program that I am in to pour into myself and get some development. And I was sitting this morning really reflecting on just like how much I've grown and like what the top takeaways were. Cause I'm, I'm exhausted. Like, let me just be frank. I am tired. Um, but I was sitting here this morning thinking about like how tired I was, but then asking myself, like, I'm so grateful that I'm in this position to, uh, to feel this exha exhaustion, if that makes sense. Um, and one thing that probably one of the biggest lessons I learned over the past two weeks of travel and the past two weeks of just being surrounded by so many different types of like individuals and energies is that your financial growth cannot outpace your personal growth, right? Like your financial growth cannot outpace your personal growth. And this is a lesson that I don't know, I'm just becoming more aware of as I've been growing in my business. Like, I think all of us have capacities and have thresholds on like the level at which we can hustle and produce, right? Like we all have thresholds and capacities at the level, like what our hustle can get us to. And what I mean by hustle, I just mean by like pure grit, like just pure ability to like outwork and outperform. Like I think that that gets all of us to different levels. Everybody has a different like threshold at, at where that will tap out. Um, and then I think at some point you, we, I, us, we have to make a decision to invest in our personal development, invest in like the internal game, like work on our mindset and our ability to change our thoughts and shift our perspectives and like look at things differently. Um, like our, I think it's, I, I talk about it um, like, as like your identity has to evolve. And if you don't do the internal work for your identity to evolve, you will hit a you will hit a ceiling. And that was probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned over the past week is, um, you know, I was one that my business grew quickly, like very, very quickly. Um, and I've been, you know, for the past few months, it's like, OK, well, what's the next thing that I need to do to get to seven figures? Like, what's the next thing that I need to do to grow my business? And the biggest thing I'm learning is like, the the strategy is still important having a plan is still important um but like probably one of the most critical aspects of my strategy one of the most critical aspects of my plan needs to be my personal growth and my personal development and i think a lot of the time we hear the words like i'm investing in my personal development or i'm investing in my personal growth um but very rarely do people like how are you actually defining what your personal growth looks like and what personal development looks like and I mean, reading reading books is important. Investing in your education is important. Um, but I think for me at this season, it's like really learning how to unlearn habits and how to really retrain my subconscious mind. Like that's really where I'm at right now of like, you know, they said the, the five people that you spend the most time with is a true reflection of what you're like, who you'll become. And I've all, you know, it's like a corny saying, and I don't say it's corny. I think it's just, we always hear it. Um, but like, I'm really understanding the validity and like the truth in that statement now more than ever, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and like, so what does that mean? Like once you, once you, once your current circle of who you have read, like have available access to in your day to day, once you're identity has evolved beyond what your current circles 
like level of capacity is. And I'm, let me say, well, I'm trying to explain this the best way that I can. Um, like all of us right now, we have access to what our current circle is, like right in your day-to-day -day life, who you interface with on a regular basis, who your coworkers are, who um, your friends, like who your social circle is. You will get to a point where more than like you may or may not, maybe you have a great circle that's like in real life with you. Um, but you'll, I know for me, I got to a point where I outpaced the level at which my current surrounding was. So I had to be ridiculously intentional on making sure that I was putting myself in rooms and putting myself in environments and in spaces that allowed me to grow. Right. Like if I the people that I was around, I, our visions weren't the same anymore, like where it was that I wanted to go. They had no concept of a reality of um, or they had the concept of a reality of, but they weren't as committed to doing whatever was required to achieve that outcome and achieve that goal. So people always ask, like, Jay, how did you. Um, yeah, somebody just said elevation requires separation. And it's just, it's so beautiful because I'm, I'm still going through the prayer of Jabez devotional. And it's so interesting how all of this like is biblically based, <laughs> how like your elevation requires separation. Like when God has um, called certain individuals to have like radical faith and trust in the future of where he was taking them, he called them to do something different. And a lot of the time he called them to like leave, leave what, like leave whatever was comfortable, leave whatever their current environment was and to go someplace they have never been before, or do something they've that really stretched them beyond what their norm was um, in order to receive the blessing. And like, so, you know, I'm realizing, well, I realized a long time ago that my mindset and where it was that I wanted to go and where it was that I was being called to go was outside the realm or capacity of people I had in immediate contact with me. So I'm like, I had to be intentional to put myself in rooms and put myself in spaces that would allow me to grow and stretch. And for me, people like people are like, well, how did you get access to those rooms? Like I paid for it with cash. Um, and I think it's some people like, and that's kind of like the dilemma I've been having is like, how much money is too much money to have access to certain rooms. And that's like the mindset I've been twirling in because I don't like I don't see that many people around me making decisions that um, I guess like I'm in a I'm in a position right now that I need to be making in regards to how much money they're willing to pay for access to certain rooms. And the only thing I can compare it to is like somebody going to get an MBA from like an elite university or even from a regular university. Like you think about like why people go get their MBA or why people go get advanced degrees. It's like they want to be in environments that grow them. They want to be in, in an educational system that will stretch them. Like people pay to go to Ivy League schools. I mean, yeah, the education is great, but more than more, more than not, they pay to have access to the network and the people they're going to meet. And people are willing to drop 80 grand, 100 grand, $150,000 to be at these um, educational institutions because of the people they're going to meet and because of how they're going to learn and grow. Like they know that they, like, I, they're preparing to evolve themselves into a new level of identity. And it's, it, it's just interesting how I think when it comes to like the traditional system or the norm of education, we are much more likely to make those types of investments. But when it comes to, you know, like I am building a business and I intentionally chose not to go get my MBA um, when I started my business, which is like a whole nother story. But it's interesting how we can doubt ourselves to make those same type of moves when it's not into like um, an educational system, when it's not into like a societal system that everybody is already bought into. I know from and this is just I'm speaking for me. I know for me right now, as I'm at this level in my business and as I'm thinking about, OK, what's really required of me to grow to the next level? And um, what's he chewing on? No, he's not. Oh, gosh, Bentley's chewing on the mail. Um, <laughs> dogs. But what I'm, I'm realizing that what's required of me to grow to the next level is really about making investments and I'm saying investments intentionally because these these things that will require time, effort and money will I know will produce a re, like a return. Um, and 
it's it's just like why why when I'm making investments in myself in my business I'm like there's there's more hesitation than I think what would be true if I was buying into a like a, a normal societal system of education um, and I think as business owners like we have to like you me we have to be intentional on making sure that like just like we would go to college and just like we would go to um, get an MBA and, 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 and the university would be putting together our curriculum so we could graduate with whatever degree, you, you are responsible for creating your own curriculum of development, okay? Like you are resp personally responsible for putting together and intentionally designing, okay, this is where I'm at right now. This is my level of competence, right? This is my level of competence. What is required for me to get to the next level? What is required for me to graduate to that next level? And that, and when you're building a business, the answer to that is a very dynamic one because it's not just like you don't just need more knowledge. And I think this is the really the huge disconnect when you're transitioning from being an employee to becoming a CEO. Um, and this is the thing that I wish more people taught um, and like prepared individuals for because when you're an employee and many of us, most of us, me and you, we have been employees the vast majority of our lives. Um, meaning in the sense that, you know, we had a job in high school, we went to college, we had jobs, we graduated from college, maybe you didn't go to college and you got inducted into the normal society of entering into a full-time paying career or job that you had. We know how to be employees. And most of the time to succeed as an employee, um, you just really need to be good at taking direction and like executing on the direction that somebody else laid out for you, right? So as ma majority of employees, I'm not talking about like this, and this is what separates employees from like the executive levels roles is their ability to like critically think on their own and their ability to, to be the one that creating the plan, creating the strategy and being able to like deploy that to their downline of, of team members but most employees don't transcend to that level of leadership. So most individuals are really good or at least decently good at somebody else giving them a focus, somebody else telling them what the strategy is, somebody else clearly outlining what the, the strategic goals are, and then you as an employee executing on your role to move the needle. And that is a valuable skill set to have. But in entrepreneurship, you have to develop a new muscle. You have to develop this muscle of um, and your ability to be able to think critically and strategically on your own. Like you have to be able to identify that this is where I'm at and this is where I need to go and to make decisions, which I think is very difficult. Most employees haven't had to make decisions. So when they step into like the CEO role, I mean, decisions that really carry weight. Um, when they step into the CEO role, they're having to make decisions not only on what steps they're going to take, but on what the outcome is supposed to be and making decisions on what that outcome is. And then, OK, this is what I have to do on a daily basis to get me closer to that outcome. It's, it's a different way of thinking, like it's a different way of moving and operating like you're literally like exercising skill sets that most of us have not been trained or developed to, to use. And oh, that's where I'm at right now, y'all. And I think many of us are. I think you're probably in a similar position. And it's just like when you feel this level of hesitation and you feel this level of doubt, and you feel this level of lack of confidence, I want to encourage you. This is something that I learned this past weekend, too. Mm. Tea for the win. Um, this is something that I learned this past weekend, too, is like, do not confuse your level of confidence, your lack of confidence with your lack of competence. And this is like the Dunning-Kruger effect. This is something that I just learned this weekend. Um, there's like tons of research behind it is in the beginning when we start something, our confidence is extremely high. Right. Probably when you had the idea to start your business or the idea to come up with some new product or service you were going to offer, your confidence was out of this roof. Um, and part of the reason is because your competence level is not at the same threshold of what your confidence is at. 
there's so much you don't know. You'll blindly move and run without really second guessing your movements because the high of the excitement, the high that comes with your confidence is, is just driving you. But as you start moving, your confidence starts to decrease, mainly because your level of awareness of what's required to make whatever goal you just set out happen becomes heightened. Your competence, your ability to understand what's required becomes more aware. And once these things start being revealed of like, oh, crap, this is what's really required of me to get to the next level, your confidence drops. And a lot of the time, and this is I'm so glad I learned this this past weekend, is do not confuse your lack of confidence and your ability to produce or your ability to perform with your lack of competence. Typically, this is how like the Dunning-Kruger effect works and Google this um, so you guys can read up on it. But like the reason why your confidence has dropped is because your competence has increased and your level of awareness is now heightened at a higher level than it was before. So then we start to freak out because it's like, I don't know if I can do this because you start to become aware of what's required for you to do it. And you weren't like that level of awareness didn't exist before. Um, and that's the time where you need to double down and like continue forward. Just because you lack confidence, your ability to be motivated or like, ah, I don't know if I can do this, that that is not the time for you to stop. But that's the time for you to like lean in more now than ever and reach out for support. Um, and like, it, it's just like nobody taught us this. Like nobody, nobody educated us on this. And I'm just really glad this is something that I'm learning right now because I think we, you go through these cycles in business all the time. And like, once you're in that lull of low confidence, but increased competence, that's the time you need to reach out for support. That's the time that you need to buckle down. That's the time that you need to keep moving, even though you don't feel motivated. Like that's the time you need to keep like driving forward, even though you don't feel the confidence in yourself, because you will, then your confidence will start to increase. Your competence will also start to increase. And then the cycle starts over again. And it's, it, it's uh, a, a lot of the time, I know I used to believe this and maybe you believe this now, um, or maybe you're outgrowing this belief is that a lot of the time we would wait I'll wait until I feel motivated. I will wait until I feel confident. I will wait until I see the money before I move, before I act, before I do. And it's just backwards. It does not work like that. Um, And I'm just like, the more that my, I think the thing that's kind of interesting for me right now is the more that I'm growing at like a conscious level um, in regards to how I'm making decisions in my business, how I'm being intentional on developing my curriculum for myself, like what, classes do I need to be taking? What rooms do I need to be in to grow myself as an individual, to grow myself as a business owner, to evolve into the person that I've been, like, I know I've been destined to become, like, what's required of me? And, and, and like, the more I'm going through this, like, it's just, it's all biblically based. Like, it's, it's so interesting how the parallel, well, I don't think it's interesting. I think it's by design. And it's just like, my level of awareness is now becoming aware of just like, bro, this is all God. Like so much, like you're, like I really believe your ability to succeed in business is based on the level at which you exercise your faith, period. Like your ability to succeed in business is based on your level, like on your ability to exercise your faith. Whatever level of faith you're able to exercise, I really do believe your success in business will be parallel. Um, mainly because like you there's so much that's unknown there's so much that is like we have no control over when it comes to our business and our development and where like like what's going to be coming around the corner you're uh, you have got to exercise this like radical faith like you have to have this like uh, like holy commitment i and i truly believe it um like no level of strategy or no coach you hire, like nowhere you go can tell you exactly what the outcome is going to be. I mean, like these things can, and I believe that God put people in our lives for a reason. Like he didn't give us all the juice for a reason. Like he wanted us to work together. He put certain gifts in each of us individually. Like we're supposed to come together as a community and we're supposed to invest in each other. Like you choosing to invest in a mentor, you choosing to invest in an advisor, 
you choosing to invest in curriculum that somebody else has developed is you investing in the kingdom. Like, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, and that's like, you know, that, that's, and it's an effect, like we all are supposed to be doing that. Like none of us are supposed to figure it out by ourselves. Um, none of us are supposed to be just moving and operating and figuring out everything on our own. Like that's just not how it was designed. So, and you wonder why if you are somebody or if you're in a season right now where you're just trying to like reverse engineer and funnel hack and mimic what you see other people doing and you're wondering why you're not getting the same results they're getting, I can guarantee you it's because there's so much more that's happening behind behind the scenes. There's so much else strategically moving that you can't mimic, that you can't see until you pay to have access to see it. Um, that's just part of the process. But I just, I really believe that like, I don't know, like the more I'm growing in business, the more I'm learning how to exercise faith and the more I'm learning how important it is to be obedient um, despite my level of confidence or despite my like feel of motivation, you know? Right, you can't Google your calling or purpose. <laughs> That's really good. Like I double tap that. Um, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like we, you are born in a day and age that is like miraculous. Like the fact that we have so much access at our fingertips is beautiful. And like be, I'm saying be resourceful, but also evaluate what resources are required for you to like leverage and use and to allow to flow to get you to where it is that you want to go. Right? Like, like, it's, it's just like, you know, even if you think about something simple as like going on a trip, like if I want, if I'm in Detroit and I want to get to the Bali or wherever it is I'm trying to go, there are resources that are required for me to spend to get to that destination, right? Like, and it's just, it is, it's, it's just as simple or just as true when it comes to where you, it is you want to grow in your business or where it is that you want to grow um, development wise for yourself. Like it's, it's, I think I feel like I've been talking about this theme for a while, but like it's it really hit me this weekend that your financial growth cannot outpace your personal growth. And we are just you need to be responsible for developing your curriculum for success. Like you need to be responsible for develop. Like if you have no curriculum that you're following right now, like I would pause. I would really pause and evaluate what it is that you're doing, because just like in college, like if any of us wants to go become a doctor, become a lawyer, become an engineer, become a nurse, become a practitioner, become whatever it is, you don't just decide one day that I'm going to just Google my way to being a neurosurgeon. You don't just decide one day I'm going to Google my way to being a pipeline engineer. You don't just Google one day I'm going to just Google my way to being a pharmacist. No, you start where somebody left off. You invest in a process, you invest in a framework, you invest in a methodology, you invest in proven education that you follow step by step, A to Z, to graduate and have the skill set required for you to produce or perform or whatever that is. And it's just so interesting how when it comes to business, because it's not like us being in this digital space us being like these on, in this online marketing online world, the reason why I think it's uncomfortable for people to apply that same logic is just because it's new age. You know, like there's no, there's no system around it yet. It's unregulated. Like it's the wild, wild west out here. And I, and I get that like, people are cautious because of that, because there is no regulation. There is no governing body that is saying that this program is better than another, or this person is trustworthy and this one isn't. Um, so you have to do your own due diligence. But I just think that like, regardless, if you're trying to start from scratch, like, why are you making it harder on yourself than it needs to be? Like, if, if, if you're trying to start at zero when somebody else has already built a framework and a process for you to start at, you know, level five, like, why not go start at level five? Like, and I think, you know what I mean? And I wonder for the black culture, for, you know, us brown folk, do we just default to starting at the bottom because that's just what we know and that's what we've been taught i don't know i don't know um i don't know but i'm just choosing not to accept that as a norm for me anymore i'm choosing to make it a priority for me to follow 
like and implement methodologies and processes that have been proven. Like I'm making it a priority for me to start where somebody else left off um, versus me trying to like figure it out on my own. Because I'm learning that like I can make all the money in the world. I, and I believe that as a fact. I believe that is truth. But if I, my identity, my, the way that I think about the world, the way that I think about myself, the way that I mentally operate and process, if that does not evolve, I'll never receive and obtain the abundance that I've been called to have. And I think the same is true for you. So that's what I got for you today. Um, one thing that I am really excited about on another note, and we can do a quick Q&A if anybody has any questions. I know there's a ton of you guys on live right now. So feel free. If you have any questions at all, we can do a quick Q&A. But um, while you guys are typing in questions or thinking about if you have questions, I am doing something really fun next week. I'm hosting a three-part video training series called Sales Made Simple. And this is a three-day training series. It's going to show you how to enroll high-ticket clients consistently. So I'm really, really, really pumped about it. It's absolutely free. So if you've been struggling with trying to figure out um, which one of your business ideas is the most profitable and how to validate that idea, how to really understand if you're ready to sell high ticket offers, how to, you know, if you're really interested in learning how to actually like what's really required for you to package a signature service and um, package a high ticket offer, if you're interested in learning on really what's required for you to start selling high ticket, I invite you to join. Um, we start on April 8th, Monday, April 8th, and you can click the link in my bio or visit jerishahawk.com backslash sales made simple to register. Um, like I said, it's absolutely free. Um, if you have a business bestie or you have a friend that you guys work together when it comes to your business or you guys set goals together, I highly recommend that you share that link with them or tell them to register too. Like I said, it's a three-part training series. Um, I'm really, really excited. I haven't done a challenge or a workshop like this in, in a year. It's been exactly a year. So I'm very, very excited about it. Um, we're we're going to be introducing this free three-part training series. And then um, Services That Sell, we're introducing a new version of it, Services That Sell 2.0. So I'm just really excited for all the newness and all the goodness that's coming out. Um, and I invite you guys to join. So if you're on Instagram watching this, if you just click the link in my bio, or send me a DM, um, you can register for free to join. Or if you're over on Facebook, you can click the link in the title of the description or in the comments to register to join. Like I said, it's absolutely free, three-part video training series called Sales Made Simple, helping you understand what's really required to pack, package and sell high ticket services. Hey, Darnie. Hi, Courtney. Um, I'm, glad, I'm so glad that you enjoyed this, this chat today. I haven't been on in a while, but I'm not seeing any questions, but just wanted to check in with you guys today. And hopefully I'll see you guys at the Sales Made Simple workshop next week. So make sure you register. Like I said, it's absolutely free. All the fun and goodness will be taking place inside of my Facebook group. So just make sure you register so you can get all access to all the details. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, y'all.